Glad everybody's back in the building. Uh, nice little commercial break. Uh, great interview, by the way. Um, Joey Brooks is a great interview. Uh, episode 32, Inside the Rapper Studio. Joey, you can uh, send another uh, request. There you go. Appreciate it. Thank you for your patience. You know, Xfinity is Xfinity. <coughs> so, uh, the last thing we were talking about was the collabing situation. So, you should be joining in from right there. Yeah. You back in? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. So, the last thing we were talking about was pretty much the collaboration uh, debate, whether you the paperwork side or the relationship side. Yeah. Um. I'd rather fuck with who I fuck with. Like, honestly, like, I've had the paperwork side, and I've only, I've only literally done it, I've done it twice, and I've done it recently uh, with some, with, it's like, I want to give you that real, 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 but then it's hey, like, whatever you can, whatever, <laughs> whatever. But like, just because people are watching, it's like, fuck, I don't want to be controversial, and I don't want to start shit. Like, but, first stage, man, just do what you feel. But, like, <laughs> Fucking with people on the contracts, bro, it just removes that personal touch to me. It does. It really do. It makes me feel like this is strictly business and yeah. it's no emotion. Like, it just, it don't feel personal to me. It, it, it don't. Feel like it feels like a transaction. Yeah, to the point, like, now, I'm never, I don't think, I don't care how big I ever get. I don't think I'm ever going to charge for features because I'm only going to fuck with who I fuck with anyway. And we both gonna get the royalties and the shit on the back end anyway. So it's not like you're working for free. But like personally, like if and if I reach out to you, which has happened and you'd be like, oh, I need $500. I'm gonna see ya. Like, right. not, not because I'm cheap. Like, there's a dollar sign in my name for a reason. Don't get it fucked up. But like, <laughs> I, I just don't, I just feel like it fucks up the creative process for me when there's money involved. Like, that's why I, I'm usually with, I won't say I'm usually with the same people, but I'm always going to fuck with Vlad. Like, Vlad's my guy. Like, um, Martin J. Baloo's my guy. Um, 4K's my guy. 4K probably charged me now because prices went up and shit, but whatever. Like, but, like, yeah, when it comes to contracts, I don't like doing contracts when it comes to features because it fucks it up for me. And the last uh, experience I had, it just took them way longer than it should have. And, I mean, what they did was great. And you're going to hear it at some point this year. But I was just like... And then also, a lot of people in the scene think... Think certain features are going to save their shit. That. I, and I, I just, I just play it back and I listen. I'm like, you, you pay for this. Like, this wasn't a genuine like we on link. This was like, nah, bro. I need your name on this so people can listen to this. And I'm like, nah, like that's not me. But I'm only gonna fuck with who I really fuck with. Lo Luckily, the people I fuck with are popping people. Like, so it's like whatever. Like, but nah. To answer your question. Fuck contracts when it comes to features. I don't do that shit. Got you. <laughs> so, <laughs> the next song I wanted to talk about was from uh, Here Goes Nothing, and it was Used to Smoke. Uh, with Used to Smoke. That's not true anymore. I'm sorry. I broke that. <laughs> <laughs> but with uh, Used to Smoke, basically with Vlad, when you talked about the relationship side, it kind of glides right in. So I wanted to talk about the relationship side that you had with Vlad when it comes to making music. So how did this song come about? That's an old song. That actually was supposed to be on Balfour was here, but we just saved it. Um, at that time, I just did, I didn't want to smoke anymore. I felt like I was an addict. I didn't want to smoke weed no more. Whatever. So, oh, and also... <laughs> a lot of my songs are replies to other songs from other artists. Um, so, Use of Smoke is a reply to the song Friends by J. Cole and KOD. Oh, he's like, cop another bag of smoke today. That was my, like, kind of response. Like, all right, damn, this is me not trying to smoke no more and trying to do more healthy stuff. 
Right. And um, that's a very interesting take, too. Yeah, so I basically just told a story about me, like, copping weed. What'd I say? The block is hot. Pull up next to me and show me what you got. Ziploc with the 3.5. He's looking out. He baka blocks. Then I cop. Skirt off in the whip before I see the ops. Hop into the store and cop the backwards. We don't do the chop, so shit, we stop. Did you get the water or the soda pop? Shit be getting hella, shit be getting brazy, hella hazy. Fuck it, I forgot. There we go. Back to the crib. I'm going to show you where I live. I don't even smoke no more, but fuck it. This is when I did. Yeah. So I was just really just trying to get some, <laughs> trying to get some imagery of like when I did smoke and just like, I just wanted to tell a story, bro. I feel like I never told a story before. Like J. Cole or Nas or Kendrick. So I just wanted to tell a story. And then I wanted to also tell a story that was that actually could help somebody, not be detrimental, not just pussy money weed, but like here's my struggles trying not to smoke actually. Um, but yet here I am, all I could do is thinking about smoking. <laughs> it was just it was a lot in that. Yeah. And then Vlad gives his struggles too. He's like, man, I don't think I've ever been sober for 25 hours or less. Like, when did this even happen? So I really fuck with how that whole thing came about. We never performed that song, actually. I just thought about that. Never performed that shit live yet. Did you think you were going to perform it, like, if Corona wasn't? Hey, man, I don't know. Because I I don't know what people want from me, bro. <laughs> to keep it a step. <laughs> I be thinking like, so we'll get into it, or maybe we won't, I don't know, but on my project called, is it on the accents on Here Goes Nothing? All I ever wanted was a pinky, right? So right. I never planned on performing that song ever. You're right, Charlie. It don't matter what people want. But um, I'm literally giving people my life story of how like all right people try to clown oh he from mo county he from silver spring so he must have grew up hella rich nigga i was the poorest of the rich nigga i was the poor <laughs> nigga what <laughs> like nigga i was poor i don't care what nobody says yeah i grew up with wealthy people but i wasn't rich nigga so like right. i'm giving up i'm giving my story on accents i'm really like being honest as fuck like i'm like um I remember coming up, I was poor as fuck. My mama couldn't buy me nothing, so I had to hustle up. If I had one or something, man, I had to double up. Joy Bricks, what's the sound? That's how you know I'm coming up. I said, all I had to eat was Cheerios, oranges, and ice. Niggas think I'm from the county, so they think I had it nice. Eviction notice on the door, mama crying in the bed. I ain't never had nothing, but I always had two legs. Nigga. I never thought I would see a day where I'm like, where I'm like, you just told all I had to eat was Cheerios, story, oranges, and ice, and niggas like, turn up. I'm like, yeah. like, I've never seen that happen before. Like, and it just made me have a new respect for music. Like, damn, people, like, people literally, the difference between Balfour was here and here goes nothing. Balfour was here was just straight up like, yo, that shit crank. Yo, that shit, yo. But here goes nothing was more like people literally have put me took me to the side like bro I heard insecurities like yo I feel you like like niggas niggas really have asked me all you have was ice nigga like like yeah <laughs> <yes. laughs> like niggas have really pushed me to the side like like awesome like yeah I went through this too and all this I would have never thought you went through this like here goes nothing has brought so many intimate conversations into my life because I made people not feel so ashamed of like shortcomings that weren't even their fault growing up. Because when you poor growing up, you feel like it's your fault. <laughs> Absolutely. It might not be your fault at all, but you feel like it's your Absolutely. fault. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? Like everybody, everybody got the best clothes, everybody eating the best food at lunch, and your ass is in the corner. Like, you know what I'm saying? So like, I go here goes. I I have I I just made here goes nothing. Not only for me, but for other people going through whatever it is that they're going through. Cause life is hard. Like people like to downplay that shit, but like life is hard as fuck. Like, 
honestly. Like, and I don't have the answers, but music is my way of just like giving my take on shit. So, yeah. I don't know. Okay. Yeah. true for that, man. I appreciate <laughs> that. We talk about a project that pretty much just puts you in that space where you put your heart out to the people, the people respond, and now you have to respond to, back to the people with a project like Bricks. So tell us how you're pretty much in your space right now for making a project like this. Yo, y'all gonna love Mr. Bricks. Like, I feel like I have a fucking inside joke like nobody knows about in my like in my pocket like right <laughs> it's, it's ridiculous like so mr bricks the reason i even called it mr bricks is because um for a couple months i just noticed when i would pull up to a function or something people would be like yo that's mr bricks or what's good mr bricks and i always used to be like why do people keep calling me that <laughs> like is it because I'm old as, like, what? Like, because I'm not 21? Like, what the fuck? Those are branding. <laughs> so, I remember my friend Yayla. Y'all know, y'all know Yayla. Um, Yayla Yeah. So, she, I think it was a show I put her on or something. And then I told her, like, directions for something. She was like, okay, we'll do Mr. Bricks. I was like, I just had to double back. I was like, like I was I really came to her like yo am I being disrespectful or something like am I being rude because like I don't want you to think I'm bossy like you call me Mr. Bricks she was like nah I just respect you like you Mr. Bricks I was just like okay <laughs> <laughs> so I just ran with wow. that shit I was like everybody keep calling me Mr. Bricks and Mr. Bricks to me uh just exemplifies a person that's a man of the people and I really right. do feel like Mr. Bricks is somebody running for mayor like I feel like I really, like, do stuff not for me, but for, like, everybody else. I know this event will be good for this crowd, this crowd, this crowd. So, like, and I, I think, yeah. So another story why it's called Mr. Bricks and how I think, like, I think I'm kind of good at bringing people together, man. I'm starting to see that shit clearly. Um, and um, so I hosted it right before quarantine, right? I hosted this eight hour studio session at my at my man's crib and I invited a couple people, but I put it on Twitter. I was like, I want everybody pull up. Don't matter who you are. I'm not gonna judge you. I just want people to be I hope hopefully I can't hear you. All right, all right, bye, 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 bye. Yeah, I got you. I'll be right back. Yeah. yeah. 